Hey guys, I wanted to do a little quick video. When we send out packages, we put together packages for different vendors that we support. One of the things that we do is we provide switch gear, we provide cabling, and we provide a lot of support for generators. When there's a hurricane coming and things happen, our customer that rents big generators, they'll rent the generators and maybe they don't have enough cable, so they'll get a cable package from us. And we handle all of our four and out cable, and that's what this cable here is, is four and out. So that's four slash zero. So that's bigger than a number four cable. You know, it goes four, zero, one out, two out, three out, four out. And in a portable cable world, a four and out cable can carry 400 amps because it's in free air. So we send the cables out. What typically needs to happen is the customer has some kind of lug and like inside their switch gear, they'll see a lug like this and you would attach this cable to a lug. Well, we send them a tail and it's exactly what it is. So it has the cam lock connector on it, good for 400 amps with just a piece of cable. The customer can attach that cable under the lug into their switch gear and they would do this on the generator side and then they would do it on their service side or the equipment or the load side that they're trying to power well, a lot of times we will send these cables out and they'll come back just like these did where the electrician or whoever the service company is they're too lazy to put the tails on that we send under the lugs they cut the ends off our cables and then we have to replace them this is a video for people that are going to want to rent generators from other people and they go out and they order the rental cables or they buy their rental cables, we're gonna to demonstrate to them that they shouldn't cut the ends off. And then when they do cut the ends off, we're gonna show you how to put one back on. When they cut the end off, it's really disturbing to me because I'm kind of a neat guy and all of our cables are 50 feet long. And when they cut the ends off of them like this, it creates a problem because now the connector was about this long and then they cut the ends off. And so now they're gonna eat up about eight or 10 inches of the cable. So now when we put a new end on, this cable is gonna be a little bit shorter. So what we do is, is we buy a new cable to replace this cable. So all of our cables are exactly 50 feet, so it'll work out. But then people will buy these cables just being a little bit shorter and they know, and maybe they have an application where they're only using six or eight or 10 cables or this 68 cables in this case is in their package and they're all short, so then it all works out. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an end on this cable. All right, so once you took this cable off, you see how they just threw this back in the bin and now all the wires are messed up. And in a minute, you're gonna see why this is a problem. So you guys that are trying to be an apprentice electrician or work in this environment, and you see how this cable is the same, it's a four and all. You see how I put this piece of tape on there and this protects these ends. And then you can use this over and over again and you can continue to land this cable on a lug and, and the wires all stay intact and it doesn't hurt anything. And if you did want to connectorize this cable or put it back under some lugs, all the wires are still trained and it would work out nice. Here's a little pro tip. If you'll make a little flag on the end of your tape where it doesn't set back down, the person that's going to remove it can find the end of it easily and then pull it off and unwrap it. So just put a little flag at the end of your tape and they'll know where to find the end. So anyway, you should always do this. So if you're taking these cables off, take five minutes, take you some electrical tape. In this case, I use twat phasing tape, but just use black electrical tape, any kind of tape, and then that will save the person from having to cut these ends off. So now, since they cut this off, we're gonna have to find us a new way. We gotta get us a, a clean, good set of cable to work with. So now we're gonna cut this guy off with this ratchet and cutter. We're gonna open up our package. Once we have the cables, we have a clean set of cable, they send this little piece of copper, which allows you to tame the wires. And so we have to strip this cable back. This is a nice piece of cable here because it has the outer SO jacket and then it has this inner white jacket. And that gives you a chance if this cable becomes damaged, you see white before it becomes a problem. Now you see this really neat set of four knot wires there that we do and then we can take our piece of copper shield and we wrap it around it. Okay, so then you install this on here and you notice that I cut it exactly the length of the copper shield and it still runs a little proud here. And so see, I have that piece, I didn't get it exactly perfect. So you don't have to do this, but I usually take the time to go ahead and trim that excess off because I don't like, I like the connector to be as close to the um, end of the installation as possible. So you just take your ratchet and cutter and you can clean that end up a little bit. And now when you, when you put your connector in, you'll notice that it um, runs down and does a little bit better of a job. You get a rounded back up. 
So I like to do the bottom connector first or the bottom screw just in case. I have done it where like if you cut it with an angle or you're sloppy, it'll push the cable out of the connector on the bottom connector. And they give a torch back and you'll notice that that impact's a little bit quieter so it's a hydraulic impact rather than a um, mechanical one. And the torque spec on the impact at what it yields is very similar to what the manufacturer calls for. Now on the strain relief, inside of here, these guys, they, they're kind of generous with this cutting. So I like the way it looks if I cut the middle of this one. If you go by the numbers, you should cut it way back here, but I like having a little bit extra. So put a little bit of lubrication on there, you can get it. So I always cut it a little bit longer because I like to have the longer strain relief that shows up on my cable. We cut that guy off. And then some people use water as a lubricant or, or dish soap or something. I like to use the WD-40 um, because, well, if a lot of people know this, but WD-40 stands for water displacement. So it's a light oil that carries a, the moisture away. So what little bit of residue of this remains inside the cable tends to help us over time. So that kind of works out. So then this is a little bit tricky. You got to get him to go on there. Now this screw on the on these cable connectors, the screw can go all the way through the female part of the connector, run the screw all the way through. You want the screw to go in from this side because it's tapped all the way through and it won't take from that side. So that aligns with that little detente that aligns the connector. So if we look on this end, you see the detente's there and we know that's about in line. And so we know once we find the hole at that particular location, we're on the right side of the connector. And so we know that this is the side that screws in right here on this little hole. And then you put the keeper screw in and it's not important to get this tight. It's just important to get it flush because all this does is just keeps the connector from twisting or sliding off. And there we go. We got a brand new connector. So once you get to that point, your connector is complete. The male connector is very similar to the female connector. These connectors confuse a lot of people too. So one thing you might want to notice is, you know, that would typically look like the male connector, but it's actually the female side. So um, one little trick, if you keep up with the electrical connection, not the physical appearance of the cable, how the electrical connection works. And as you can see, the inside metal parts of the female. So this is a female, 400 amp cam connector. It's used in television, movie, studio, portable cable applications. It's kind of the cable connector of choice because you can change phase, you can change rotation, you can do all kinds of things with the flexibility of the 400 amp cam connector. Pretty versatile little cable.